Hello, hello, hello. Happy Saturday morning. Hey, I'd already greeted my people. Yeah, when I was dancing. This is Mark, right? Your inspirational speaker, motivational speaker, stuff like that. So, um, 10 o'clock, I like to do general inspiration, motivation, and encouragement. And um, I'm still having breakfast, but I, I don't like to be late. So the thing has been bothering me. And so I told myself, okay, you put some music while you finish eating. People already know you like Zam Zam. So part of the eating is actually, I had to dissect. I had to judge between being late and eating live. So I decided to eat live. You know, I don't want to be late. So we are already in the show. But we'll start with my eating before we go... When I finish eating now, I'm not eating too much, just four beignet and beans. And then we would, um, after eating, we would start talking. So there is this song by Dule, Oh Shemo. So at least, let's listen to Oh Shemo. <laughs> Thank you. 
people who do um who hurt other people deliberately like that fellow who killed that beautiful young woman in america um another fit for digest die for close chapter for die like that one it's just terrible okay -o. so my spirit leads me to talk about discernment because well i had once talked about discernment before and i will continue to talk we cannot stop talking about things it would appear some people will hear the first time some will hear the second time some will hear the third time some will hear the tenth time so if it's in you to do that to do the talking do the research do the writing do the video do the whatever do your thing especially if you are passionate about it so that is it. So um, I'm passionate about my purpose. My purpose in life is to inspire, motivate people from all walks of life with my personal experiences, be it those I've collected through my own four decade plus one of life, um, all what I've read and what I keep reading, what I watch, what I observe, what I, you know, as a psychotherapist, people I work with, their stories can inspire me as a lawyer, all of those things all over the place so um you know domestic abuse domestic violence sometimes we say oh why did the person not leave earlier or why did they call the police or why didn't they do this or why did somebody not talk to them i mean man or woman but yeah me, me, I'm, I'm more biased you know towards women talking for women but and in this particular case it's a woman once more who lost her life right so I'm um, talking also to my sisters or to those who have sisters. Sometimes we think this thing is women are north, men are south. But I mean, women are men. We are one human beings and we cannot do without each other. Either as a brother, a father, a husband, a boyfriend, whatever, and jumba, anything, put it all inside them. Yes, one thing that helps people to know what to do, when to do it, and all of that is discernment. And, um, I personally pray for it a lot every day. My personal prayer starts with, Lord, grant me the serenity and discernment every day, sometimes two, three times a day. I can repeat that prayer. I know it offhand. And I wrote that prayer in 2016. And I got to really think about what was going on in my life. And I just realized there was no discernment. I was an impulsive person. I was like, on the spur of the moment, I am still on the spur in some areas, but in serious areas, I am not on the spur. I mean, I have read an email and replied telling the person I will respond in one month. That's, and to be discerning sometimes, you have to be someone who can go deep inside you and stay there. Someone who doesn't mind silence. Someone who doesn't mind to be lonely or alone whichever one because those things are important to get that you know if you are a spiritual person or a religious person or whichever of them i don't want to call any names because i'm known of those names you will know that or you would believe that it's a spirit that is given to you by your creator i call him god call him or it or whatever any names you know me i don't like going into religious debates and stuff like that i'm like i am over that because love is universal it is not the prerogative of catholics or you know even when you go to christianity you start having all those other small small denominations 
And then in the end, you, you wonder, are, are there all Christians or are Catholics more Christian than Protestants or than Pentecostals or stuff? So I'm like, I'm not of that. Muslims fight with Catholics or with Christians. And is love a prerogative of, can you just love? So I'm all, I'm above all of that. I just don't want to identify myself as any of those things. I'm a spiritualist. I believe in spirit power. And yeah, many people will say we are spirit, body and mind or something like that. So anyway, that is it. And for me, discernment is a gift of the spirit. And I think it's somewhere there in the Bible too. Um, I think Solomon asked for that. People will say he asked for wisdom. And I was listening to a sermon by some bishop there in America. You know, there's so many bishops. He's called Bishop. I think uh, Clooney or something like that. Let me see if I can find that sermon. So he was talking on um, discernment and saying we should not leave our homes without it. I don't even want to leave my bed without discernment. That is how much. Before I get up and I talk, what is that? History. Before you answer somebody and all of that. Oh my God, where is it now? There's been a lot of music since I listened to that sermon. Now, wow. Hey, uh, um, yes, Bishop Dale. Bishop Dale C. Bruna. I don't know the name of his church. The first time I listened to this bishop Process was when he was two. interviewing Bishop Carlton Pearson. And I knew about Carlton Pearson because this other, what I suppose so, he was blaming Carlton Pearson doctrine of having led um, Ophoria astray. So I got curious. I said, who is this man who can be having a doctrine that can lead somebody astray? Let me listen to that doctrine and see if it can, if it will lead me astray or whatever that doctrine is all about. You know, sometimes we don't venture into things just because people say it is bad. Somebody said the book is bad, a book that whichever book. I'm sure people will say the course in miracles I'm studying since 2018 is a bad book. It's a heresy book and all of that, but to each their own. Some people will also say the Bible is blasphemous. Some people will say the Quran. Some people will say anything. I don't follow all of that. I read anyone that I read, get whatever I get from anyone, and continue living in my life. So anyway, so I'm I, I listening to whoever says what, Sarah Jakes, T.D. Jakes, um, Ture, whoever, anybody saying anything, uh, Cassandra Max, anyone, I listen, I get what I'm getting from it, and I move on. So he was talking about the assignment, uh, I think he's... Ministry is called Word of Faith Family Worship Cathedral. Whatever they do there, I don't know. I just listen to my thing and I move on. And uh, I also listen to Cassandra Mark. This is the first time I'm listening to her. I didn't even know who she was. She was also talking about... Um, why can't I see her now? I listen to her. Or maybe it's on that phone. Okay, she was talking about um, highly discerning people and why they don't have many friends. And I know myself now, I'm one of them, and I don't have many friends. I can have 5,000 there on Facebook, but my circle, I don't even think I have a circle. There's no one person I can call to say, oh, this person did this to me, or, you know, last night, I've just passed that level to talk about those kind of things, that whether my boyfriend went or come down. Because you might be telling your, you can think it's your best friend today, and tomorrow you people have a problem and before you know it, that thing is all over, that jagging it on social media and stuff. Let me jag my things myself on social media. But let me not think that somebody is my friend. And then I tell them something thinking that it's between the two of us. And tomorrow I see it on social media. I will really feel betrayed. So to avoid all of that, I don't have that kind of friend. If anything, I seriously, I, I just dump it on social media to process it. I, I pray on it. I get that discernment. I talk to anybody. Knowing that if you care, you take the thing to social media. I did not tell you because I, did, I wanted it to be safe. I told you to just to, to, to get your, your feedback on it. Uh, these people who are calling me now, I already called them in the morning. So no problem. I'll be going there in the afternoon to collect my goods. Okay. So that is it. Uh, um, we really need discernment. So what is discernment? 
Discernment is the ability from Wikipedia. Discernment is the ability to obtain sharp perceptions or to judge well. When the Bible says, do not judge or so you sh or what are the show? <laughs> do not judge and you will not be judged. It means judging another person. It doesn't mean judging a situation to know whether you should dive in or you should not dive in, whether you should get involved or you should not get involved. No, you have to judge. You know, it's like the bishop was saying, um, parents are sometimes worried about their children leaving home when they think that the children don't yet have that discernment, that maturity to be able to take decisions on their own and follow through and, uh, you know, stand up to life because not, life knocks people down. And so if you cannot, so if they know that their child is still behaving like, you know, some children even at uh, 21, they are still like, if you don't tell them that sit down and eat, they will not sit down and eat. You still have to ask them what they'll eat before you cook and they eat. If not, they'll just look at you like that or you, you know, or they, they don't take initiative, you know, they don't have a mind of their own because... Well, maybe you have made up their mind for them so long that they don't know how to make up their mind without you. Or they have been so bullied out there, even on social media. So they don't go there again. They don't want to go out. They don't want to go on social media. They cannot have an opinion of their own. You know, they don't know what to wear. For example, they'll be like, Mama, what should I wear? Or should I go? What should I tell them? Or all those kind of things. No. So at some point they have to go out, right? They get to university. Can they stay in your house and be great university? Even if they stay there, they will start meeting other people and start thinking differently. And so you are like, hey, you cannot have a mind of your own. Why are you following your friends so sheepishly? But who knows? So yes, they need that discerning spirit and you yourself need it so that you can help them to get it. So you need to be able to judge for your own self if you are doing it right. And if not, how can I do it? What should I stop doing? What should I do more of? What should I tell them? What should I not tell them? You know, parenting, for example, you cannot do it the same from the time they were zero months to the time they're 20. No way. It's a process. So even you yourself, your own life is a process, a journey, right? Becoming. Okay. So that is what discernment is. In the case of judgment, not judging other people, I'm not talking about judges in court, even though they too need discernment, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you as a human being, your life. In the case of judgment, discernment can be psychological, moral, or aesthetic in nature. Mm -hmm. It can be psychological, like uh, a man, you meet a man, and then he tells you, you are the best thing that has ever happened in my life. After three days, for example, ah, you yourself think it very well in your head. That you meet somebody three days only. Even if people are chatting 24-7, which is uh, 24 hours a day, which is impossible. You can go six hours, eight hours, ten hours set. But even if you are living in the same house, you cannot chat 24 hours a day. Both of you will get tired. And secondly, if you meet somebody on Monday and by Wednesday you are moved in together, now you know. So, if the person tells you on Wednesday that you are the best thing that has ever happened to them in their life, if you go get super excited, and, uh, I don't know how discerning you were because in three days, how does somebody know you so well to tell you or to declare to you that they cannot live without you, you are the best thing that has ever happened to them in their life? Or you yourself go and start you know, um, whether it's infatuating or whatsoever, after somebody until you can even be telling them that you're the best thing that has ever happened to my life. So that is when we say psychologically, you have probably not thought about it very well. So that is why it is said, discernment can be psychological. Moral, like, is it right? Is it wrong? I'm not just talking about dancing and stuff like that. But I'm talking, for example, about sexual promiscuity. I was once a sexually promiscuous woman. Like, I don't have any problem. I, I mean, I did not have. I could go to the nightclub, dance with you, and then whether it's love at first sight or whatever, lost at first sight, I'm gone. I mean, I once did that. I was in Garuwa or somewhere like that. Can you imagine? I was on mission. Just dance with somebody who was a footballer. It's in my book. I don't have any problem talking about those things. Just took him back to my hotel and... We had a great night and I just knew I was not going to see him again. And he knew and there was no, but what kind of reckless attitude was that? 
looking at it in hindsight, I'm like, hey, girl, goodness gracious, I don't even know if we wore a condom. Goodness, God forbid. Hey, Maria Banga has been sick in her life. Anyway, so that is it. That was so wrong. I mean, like, how am I going to talk to my kids if I can behave like that even at this age? So I needed that. I really needed to sit down and get my act together. Um, the statement can be aesthetic in nature. Sometimes, well, somebody might be like for the show on Facebook, they need to see me looking so picture perfect. Um, I want to get that figure eight. And I don't have that energy to be walking out and controlling my dad and stuff. I mean, I can just pay and get me my BBL or tummy tuck or breast, boob lift or butt shake or stuff like that. So you go and do it. But you have thought about it and you have made that choice. But for an aesthetic purpose. Because while well, it feels good to look good, why not? There are times when I also do makeup and stuff like that to look good though. But it feels good to look good. So uh, why do people do sports? It's not just for the health. What do, you want to you want to lose some weight. What's wrong in doing that? You know you want to you want to you want to appear. You want to celebrate what you have gotten in your life. And you take you you judge. If I put it on Facebook, uh, are people going to say I'm showing off wealth, or are people going to say you work hard, you chop? Or are people going to celebrate with me? Or are people going to be envious on me? And then what? So you made that decision, hopefully, after thinking about it. It is for an aesthetic it's aesthetic reason that you are putting that thing out there. Because, well, you want to have your thing out there. You want people to know that life has treated you well. That, well, my... My situation has changed. My situation is changing. If you work hard, you can afford all of this. I'm looking at it from that point. People can look at it from any point. Another person's own might be, I just want to show up. I have all of these things. Another person's own might be, well, this is what you get if you come, for example, to the land of milk and honey or if you go to Europe or uh, all of those things. Even me, I have my bookshelf there. Sometimes when I'm putting this thing, I really want it to show my books. So that people should see my books. People should know, hey, Maria Banga reads right in her room. She has a bookshop. I could turn the thing like this and you see my my blind, for example. Uh, I didn't put this today so that you should see. But some days, that's what is going on in my head. Like, And then maybe somebody can also be inspired and go ha have their own bookshelf and hanging it up, not putting it down to chop space. Whatever. The whole thing is that people think about um, that send men in different um different reasons different moments and all of that so um within judgment discernment involves going past the mere perception of something and making nuanced judgments about its properties or qualities so it's not just what you are seeing but um does it help that's quality when we are talking about quality we are talking about the value we're talking about if it helps. Does it help if I dance like this? Will it help even one person? Does it even help me myself to begin with? Yeah, it's a boost. So I do it. I'm just using my examples, right? Okay. So synonyms for discernment will include insight. When they say somebody has great insight, you talk sometimes, somebody sits and looks at you. And bows their head and say, okay, let me think over it. You know, instead of just... Perception. You are not just looking. Somebody said, and I really think that is true. Your eyes are just there, like... But what actually perceives is your brain. Because it is actually what would make you... Where's my t-shirt? This, this is a brain. The GBM Foundation for Epilepsy and Mental Wellbeing. It's all in the brain. So, it is in your brain that the mind actually processes what the eyes have just looked at and decide whether that dress she's wearing is too revealing, is not revealing, or it's just a dress, or, well, I look this, or I don't look that, or I don't care. All of that, that meaning doesn't come from your eyes. Your eyes were just open and you saw, and I can look at that brush and it doesn't mean anything to me, or it could mean something to me. So, uh, discernment can be perception, perceptiveness. Somebody 
who is so perceptive to the point where you know that when you talk to them about anything, they are just going to start looking for the deep meaning in that thing. So full of perceptiveness. What, what did I say to somebody the other day? And the person just went into, into um, dissecting the thing and stuff. And I just said, ah, I will just mention it to you. Do, why do you think if I mention something to you, it's so that you give me the, you know, so that you dissect it for me? No. I think you take life too seriously. And, and I was like, they didn't take it so nicely. But oh, in the end, that was their own. But I also had to express myself. And I'm like, stop giving yourself homework. Especially over my life. I just mentioned something to you. Don't want to start dissecting that thing for me. Okay. So, yeah. Perceptivity. People who just want to. you As you are saying something, they are already thinking about it. And looking at the different scenarios and all of that. Sagaciousness. You know, somebody who is always looking out for saga. Either drama or whatever. Like. If you tell them, oh my goodness, that's the rain. Oh, you must have forgotten those clothes outside. La, 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 la. Oh, 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 Yeah, sagacity, saganess, sapiens, wisdom. Wisdom, like Solomon asked for, according to the Bible, right? He asked for wisdom. He asked for, in Bishop, whatever sermon or preaching, he said he asked for discernment. Depends on which version you are using. So, um, that is it. Six reasons why highly discerning people have a hard time sometimes blending or why you should always seek discernment. Because oh, I love discernment too, as I already said in the beginning. And I think that, yep, it's worth it. It's worth it because you will not rush into a relationship if you really, I mean, I will not have been married as quickly as I did, if I sat down to think about it, and if I could just listen to what people were telling me, especially my parents, when I mean people, who my mother and my father, but I didn't. I had no discernment at the time. I don't know. I was so bent on getting married. Whatever anybody said at that time was just like, so I know that I can talk today and some people will still do what they want to do. And that's okay. I mean, if God gave us the freedom to choose, who am I? So I'll just talk. Maybe you can inspire one or two people. I'm also leaving my purpose and for free doing this. But um, the first thing is that when you are highly discerning, you are hardly deceived by empty words. Those not backed up by consist, consistent and follow through. Consistency, sorry. Consistency and follow through. When you are highly discerning, you are highly deceived by empty words. Those not backed up by consistency and follow through. You know... Somebody cannot tell you on Monday, I'll call you at 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. And then they call you at 2 p.m. or 12 p.m. And then tomorrow, you, you let that go. That's the first time. Tomorrow, they still say, I'll call at 12 p.m. They call at 4 or 5. You let that go. On Wednesday, they say, I'll call at 4 p.m. And then they even call at 10 p.m. And they're even angry that you're not awake. I mean, how consistent is that? Can you take such a person serious? Are you supposed to? If you can discern, if you can sit down with yourself and think about it and, 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 and really think about it, you realize that they are not consistent and that they don't even follow through because one day they will even start another and then they will not even call. You know, and then the next day they will come up with some BS excuse and stuff like that. What are you doing with all of that? Should you even give them space to continue behaving like that? I think you just block them out and tell yourself, good readers. I mean, in um, Cassandra Mark's um, thing on YouTube that I watched about something else, but then she used and she talked about this lady 
who was a very um she was a successful man she was doing stuff and stuff and then she met some man on the very first day oh the man love bombed her this is i learned the word love bomb today in short everything about her was was dazzling everything the man just spent that evening listening to her and you know women i used to love talking but today i don't talk i listen somebody even told me you listen so well yeah i listen i also learned as a psychotherapist you have to listen a client will not come and then you'll be the one talking non-stop no you listen to them and you only guide them and you ask questions and stuff so i have learned how to shut up especially when on a date first one in particular my sister listen yeah telling him all about your life on that first day so that i should do what with it do you know what he's looking for why can't you listen and even ask questions so you you talk and then he gets all the ammunition to love bump you and that is how that man love bomb this woman oh man eh, he knew everything about her on that first day and he was like ah and then she just invited him to his house for coffee man and then they went home and the man was just there going around her house touching things and just asking her one question she would tell the story of that thing move to the next one touch tell the story until he, she showed him around the house or was it apartment or wherever when they got to her bed to the bedroom to her bedroom the man just threw himself on the bed like he owns that bed already i mean he was already seeing himself in that house like moving in with her and maybe out there it's okay or common for people to be set established and then men move in with them so um that is when it occurred to her that hey, 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 hey calm down so she told the man to leave because she started getting weird weird feelings but she goes to the man for a few days and then was thinking that, oh no this is somebody who has shown me so much love i cannot do this i cannot do that and so when the man called her three days after with some apology and he sent like a dozen roses to her house oh and of course the man moved in and it became a living hell for her thereafter. She almost lost her life, fight for divorce because they eventually got married, fight for divorce. They had a nasty divorce. I mean, this woman was saying she even had to pay the man a little money. Yes, because the man wasn't even working where he said he was working. And I know that it is possible in America because I was uh, watch um, an Elizabeth Taylor documentary or something. Elizabeth Taylor is that woman, she's of late. She got married nine times. She even got married to the same man twice. I've never heard of a woman who got married nine times. Um, I watched one of her interviews with um, Steve Harvey, and she was telling Steve Harvey that, no, she's a very committed woman. She's very committed to marriage, even though she will not have been married nine times. So Elizabeth Taylor had to pay one of her husband's early money because that man wasn't working. So the man, and then the... the, the for whatever reason the man fight for stuff you know so it's not only women who get a little money anyway so can you imagine you she did not watch the signs she did not she did not sit over it the discernment wasn't there and it cost her so much almost cost her her life now her money her everything so no that is why i said no one can love bump you no one can or should love bump you there will be some typos it's my sister who type this thing no one can or should love bump you ask all the questions ask all the questions and beware if they got upset ask all the questions and beware if they get upset if somebody gets upset, say you are asking too many questions, is that somebody to bother yourself with? What do you mean by I'm asking too many questions? They too ask too many questions, girl. Even if they don't ask you all those questions on the first night, and sometimes they ask because they know we like to talk, and then we'll talk. So what's wrong with me asking questions? I say I have a questionnaire, and you would answer. You don't answer, I just put you one side and I move on. And some will even answer and still have to go through serious tests before I even decide whether I'm fully committed to you or not. If not, it will just be, well, try, 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 try. And I don't have me any problem. 
But young girl, uh, you must not follow me. Oh, so uh, you might ask question in wrong way, and that might be the what the man of your life or something like that. So, huh? Thy semen gets you to test people's spirits. Thy semen gets you to test people's spirit. Yeah, you test their patience. You know, when you tell somebody, I'll think over it. Tomorrow, they have already called you at 6 a.m. So what did you think? Like, I should not have slept at night because I have to be thinking about you. I'm like, no, I haven't yet thought about it. Ah, how long is it going to take for you to think about it? I said, give me some time. Why are you putting pressure on me? Was I waiting for you in my life? And you call me the next day out. What is that? For me, that's so much insecurity, immaturity. Okay. So I slow down the process deliberately. You are what? You are hot for something, you cool down. I mean, people have done that to me and that's, that's life, right? What's the rush? If you believe in God, eh, what is yours will be yours. What is not yours will not be yours. Or it is going to teach you a good lesson for life. So slow down the process. Don't be in such excitement to get married or get into that relationship. Man or woman. After you say, hi, I married the devil in disguise. <laughs> the assignment gets you to place more value on character rather than chemistry. Chemistry is good. And I know that men are more attracted to what they see than to who you are. And that is chemistry. You know, if they see you and they're not attracted to you, you don't arouse them somehow, you know, if you don't have figure eight or whatsoever. Uh, only a man of depth will look past what he's seeing there. You know, might go and read what you write on Facebook to know the kind of person you are. Um, the same with women, right? It will not be the six packs. So when that guy sent me the headless six pack, I don't even know whether it was his body or it was somebody's body he got from face from Google or whatever. But I went to his thing and I, I didn't see nothing there that could even tell me whether he went to primary seven or he's in form five or he's in the university. Nothing. Or whether he stands with what I even saw some something insultive and I saw something on the crisis and telling people big head all of that and i was like hey, hey, hey that's not my level so Ale. so even if the six pack if there was a head might have attracted me i was looking more for character who are you as a person um i was listening to i was listening to Ture robert that's a pastor right the man who married sarah jakes is a pastor he has this one la some church like that but i think it's part of a uh, potter's house now at that time when he was, uh, he was, or uh, they just got married or something, he did this um, sermon or something on the five things to look at to know that you have found your soulmate. One of them was chemistry. I think the first or the second was chemistry. But after chemistry, he said there was character or something like that. But some, there is some order. So he said, after you have seen what you have seen, especially during the day, now, can you still see that person at night when they have washed their face and still want to sleep with them? You know, uh, a makeup artist once told me because I sat down for like three hours for them to make up my face. Well, my sister ordered some photo shoots and stuff and called a makeup artist. I think that was the first and the last time I would sit down for three hours again. So I asked her after she had done all of that. I was just patient because well, it's my sister and I was like, okay. But I asked her, how long can I can I sleep with this thing? How many days can I keep this thing? She said, no, you cannot sleep with it. If you sleep with it, it's going to do whatsoever to your face. And I was like, all this, only to wash it at night huh. or to sweat during the day. I was like, okay. Oh. So he said, this woman you are seeing during the day. And yeah, we are women. I'm a woman. I'm, I may not put the... Um, those things but i mean if it makes you feel good put it right but then if that woman you are seeing during the day with all of those things at night she will have to wash it before getting into bed 
So can you still look at her at that time and then still hold her in your arms and still say, I love you and still be aroused by her? So that is when you are getting past the chemistry. And sister, the same for him. Like, uh, if he starts to snore at night, can you still tolerate? Or you will not go back the next day, you know? Because when you meet him now, you are having ice cream, or he's not going to snore, he's snoring, he's not sleeping time, no. So it is at night, after the lights are out. Okay? You need to test spirits, eh? You need to go for character. Discernment gets you to know where you are putting your trust. Remember the Bible says, trust no one with all your heart and soul and spirit. Trust but God with all your heart and soul and spirit. I may not be saying it exactly as it is said there. Uh, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not uh, any of those things. So please leave me alone. Um, let them end your trust. Let them earn it. <laughs> There's somebody right now. Eh? He knows the school he is in. Because I had asked them if they were ready for school. And I don't have any problem being in anybody's school. Is it by force? Okay. So. So far. Who gives us the spirit of discernment? God. For me, it's from God. I pray for it. Whether anybody thinks that I am entitled to God or not is that person's problem. But I know. And I love that. And number six reason why we should pray for thy men and why we should seek it and why we should practice it, even the small one we have. Put it into practice because the more you practice, the more you get. The more knowledge, the more understanding, the more wisdom. Solomon did not just start from day one and end up ended up being the wisest man in the world. One incident after the other, according to the Bible, right? One incident after the other. Mark is not the Mark she is today like that. No. And I'm still working on myself. Michelle Obama is still working on herself. Look, these two people are still working on themselves because they're in a different situation now. From what I have read in this book, and people say, or the British say that they contributed to this book, these guys said, and from the way I'm reading this book, it is true that they contributed to this book because there are some things the authors write. I'm like, who told you that detail? So they are saying that they did not start off thinking they were going to leave the UK. It was a very painful decision to take. And they took that decision when they were doing that tour, is it of the Caribbean or wherever. I'm already in chapter four. My mom knows I read very fast and in short, I glance and I... So now they are on their own kind of, right? The guy, for example, he has lost his military titles. He took a lot of pleasure in that, you know. He served with all his heart and everything. And well, they are now kind of wherever they are, they are no more royalty per se, and they don't have all that paparazzi again. I don't know, stuff like that. So it's a new life. And then, well, the girl cannot go back to being just the ordinary girl who will work in chicken soups and stuff like that. No, now they still have to go around with security, sort of, with a celebrity, right? They are whatever. So you adjust, you learn, you dissect, you measure your every word, your appearance, your, you know, and all those kind of things. And it's not, it's not a life that I envy at all. No prince should come near me. <laughs> I don't even think that you will cope. So, discernment gets you to know people by their fruits. Discernment gets you to know people by their fruits. So you are not just um, listening to what they say. That rubbish they used to say in church. 
do as I say, not as I do. I'm like, why? Why should I do as you say and not as you do? Why are you a leader then? Why are you a pastor? Why are you a bishop? Why are you a teacher? Why? I would rather do as you do. I want to be, I want to be motivated by what you are doing. You cannot tell me, oh, you know, um, to have a good heartbeat, uh, to have a you know better chance at life, you know, to have a good health, you have to lose some weight, and then you yourself you are looking like who even come to you a second time? Have you ever seen a dietitian who weighs uh, even 80 kg, 100 kg, 115 kg? Who is going to have for any dieting advice when she herself or he himself is looking that way? That's why when I wrote my brother's journey, um, I poked some fun at one doctor that he had. Because that doctor was obese and that doctor was telling my brother, who was also obese at the time, that he needed to lose weight. And I was like... What is he talking to you about? Okay, fine. You need to lose weight. At the same time, the doctor says that, don't look at me. I know that I'm fatter than you. That's what the doctor is telling you. I know that I'm fatter than you, but you know, you need to lose weight. And this is somebody who also had some mental health challenges and stuff. So it is easy for me to see it on you than to hear what you are saying, especially at that time. So don't be telling me I need to lose weight and you are looking that way and you are not even sharing some of your own struggles with me, how do I even share my struggles with you when I don't think you understand because, well, you are already where you are. So I don't like that thing of do what I say and not what I do. No. And that's why I, what I am doing is what I want my kids to do. I want them to be as free as the word free, to have a mind of their own, to make their choices, to stand by their choices, you know, to live a healthy life, go for it, to balance it up, to take their time, not rush into things, all of that. Um, so, discernment gets you to place more value on character than chemistry. Discernment gets you to know where you are putting your trust and to let people earn your trust. Discernment gets you to know people by their fruits. Yeah, their deeds. By their deeds, you shall know them. Some are good only for the high category not even for the how far category anyway my shorthand might not be the best not even for the how far category you know high category you just see them and you say hi or if they catch you online they say hey, you did online before you know to waste you say hi the next writing they're writing you are off even if you are still online so what must i respond to you do you know why i'm online i might be online in a meeting or something so no i mustn't you don't even need to explain it to them. And I, I think that when I listened to a show on the woman experience on Wednesday, and I could not finish that show because I was like, I don't need this. I don't even need to be reminded about this. I, I, don't, I, I don't want to hear the end of this whole thing. And I don't even want to be tempted to go find out whoever is who and what that saga was all about. No. So I just left at that time. But uh, I know this lady was talking, they were talking about friendships and relationships on that Wednesday. And the lady was kind of sharing from her personal experience. And she said she once had a friend. She really thought that was her best friend. And they had been friends for years. And it was kind of like a big sister kind of friend. And it was a friend of two terrain and all kinds of things. But um, they had a misunderstanding or they had a problem. And then before she knew it, that friend started dragging all their things online or on Facebook and she wanted to defend herself. So she also took to online Facebook doing live to bash and the bashing went on for back and forth. I never saw any of those bashings. Thank you, Father. Although I know I saw some people writing some things like, how can another woman insult another woman that she's barren? And I, I remember I made a comment on one of those posts and I was like, that's so childish or that's ridiculous, something like that. But I never got to know who insulted who and stuff. I don't. So that day, if I didn't follow this show, I would never even have known that that was a woman who was insulted that she was buried. I mean, something as terrible as a screenshot saying that she has the cement in her uterus. That is where I stopped watching the show. I was like, no, I don't stoop that low. I don't even want to hear those kind of things. But that thing really got me shaking. And it reminded me of a friendship I also had. Um... 
I was really putting in so much into this friendship. And at some point, I thought, no, 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 this is a one-sided thing. Am I begging for friendship? Am I supposed to be? And I said, okay, this person is going to go into the high category, what I have heard. So now you might not um, fall out 100%, but you kind of make some healthy boundary. You dissect and you're like, is this friendship really adding value to my life? Like, I mean, no. I mean, is this still the place for that kind of intertwined friendship of we talk every day, we see each other every day? And some friends, like I was, it is not like somebody is calling you. The calling can go back and forth, but they see each other. Majority of the time, I was the one initiating that. I was like, hey, ma, come on. People are busy. You have your own life and all of that. What is all this running after somebody? So I stopped. And so, yeah, you, you, you have a right to have a high category and a how far category and a WhatsApp category and a let's chat, let's hang out category, all of that. So mm -hmm, some are good just for the high category. We re re evaluate, think about it. Some people bleed for friendships. Some people bleed behind their friends. If you are one of such persons, maybe you want to think about that friendship if it's worth it and stuff like that. Um, I'm wrapping up now. Saturday, yes, I don't want to go above an hour. So, um, discernment will get you to own your purpose and gain more knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Oh my goodness. Oh, this child. <laughs> more knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Yep. Discernment does that. And sometimes people will start saying you're a very wise person. Yeah, because you are a person who dissents a lot. You're a person who takes perspective. You're a person who stays quiet. You're a person who spends your time, you know, engrossed in things that open your mind and not things that close your mind and keeping yourself in that closeness and even going as far as now judging people who are opening their minds or who are trying other things, you know, like the Bible is the only book in the world or the only word, I don't know. So if somebody is not reading the Bible, then that person is going off. So that is why I am not a Christian because I don't believe only in the Bible. I can read any book I want, get from anywhere. I am nothing. I'm not a Buddhist. I am nothing. I just refuse to be any of those things. Nothing. Now just God I know. Full stop. But anybody can choose their own, you know. Everybody should be free to choose their own or even choose nothing. Like atheists, are they not living? So um, that's what discernment does. And anybody can get it. Um, and then you would make friends or get into relationships only with people whose spirits are into alignment with yours. Who are those who are usually high discerning people? They are egos. Egos are usually high discerning people. People who fly. Egos fly. Egos don't walk on the ground like chickens. Are you an ego? That's what I had for us today. Um, God and life are no respecter of persons. You can have all the world's money today. Tomorrow you are gone. How life do me so? Life will only continue for do you. So the choice is yours, right? If anyone wants to contact me, you know, I'm a psychotherapist and stuff like that, visit my website um, in the days or months ahead or whenever. I'm going to do a page for my therapy practice. But let me really get to that point where that is what I need to do. For now, I'm just good doing my things the way I'm doing my things. But um, yeah, thanks to my website and to... Um, businesslists.cm where I put myself out I'm really having some clients now and uh, I'm thinking that well let me cut my niche that way and let Facebook just be the community where I give back without budging whether uh, I get clients or not I mean there are a lot of angels who have known me on Facebook uh, and who support hope and all of those things so it must not be or you scratch my back and scratch your own and all of those kind of things. That's also what discernment does when you are like, it mustn't be tit for tat. 
Okay, well, so let me read like one or two more chapters of this book. Man, I can't put it down, but I have things to do anyway. Woof. Okay, well, thank you, God. Thank you, Michael, for joining and for one whole hour with me, man. <laughs> the kind of things I usually talk about are not things that people want to listen to for one hour, except when I'm dancing or doing what sports or talking about, I don't know. Anyway. We thank God for the energy and the grace and everything. Um, wishing us all a what sweet Saturday, right? And a serene one. God bless us all.